All right, here are examples eight and nine from the section 9.1 in sequences, monotonic and bounded sequences. Now, what is a monotonic and a bounded sequence anyway? Well, to be a monotonic sequence, that just simply means that the terms are always going to increase or decrease. So if you had two as your first term, your next term could be three and then four and then five and so on. So that's a, always going to be increasing. Likewise, if you had one that decreased all the time, so you had seven and then six and then five and four and it kept going, that is always decreasing. So that sequence would be monotonic. A bounded sequence, so here's our next new vocabulary word, a bounded sequence just means there's a limit either above or below or potentially both and you'll see an example that does have both so hang on for that. And then if you have a sequence that is both bounded and monotonic it will converge to a particular number. Right now for this example we've got to figure out whether the sequence is monotonic. Determine the boundedness of the sequence using a graphing calculator to confirm our results. So with this simply what you're going to do is just list the terms and that's going to be the first thing that we'll do. So if we plug in 1, so 4 minus 1 over 1 is just 1, so 4 minus 1 that just gives us a value of 3. Now our second term, so a sub 2, is going to be 4 minus 1 over 2. Well 4 minus a half, and I'll just go ahead and write this as a decimal, is going to be 3.5. Now our third term is going to be 4 minus 1 third, or 3 and 2 thirds, which is approximately 3.67. Now if we keep going and going and going, you know, we would just get our fourth term would be 4 minus 1 over 4. Now a fourth is 0.25, so this would end up being 3.75. Now notice our terms are starting at 3, our first term going to 3.5, 3.67, So is the term, is the sequence monotonic? Yes, the sequence is monotonic because it starts with one term and increases from term to term to term, so it is monotonic. Now, is a sequence bounded? So determine whether or not a sequence is bounded, what we would do is use the limit process. So the limit, as n goes to infinity, now our sequence, 4 minus 1 over n, of course, this piece right here, this first piece, you know that part's going to go to 0. So 4 minus 0 is just 4. So is the sequence uh, bounded? Yes. Now, here's what you want to take a look at. Our first term is 3. Then we go to 3.5, 3.67, 3.75. So 4 is above all of those. So our sequence is going to be bounded above by 4. So this is one sequence that does get bounded above and it's bounded above at 4. Now let's take a look at B. B we're going to have to use our calculator to help us out with. So what I want you to do first is kind of start generate that list of terms. Again, cosine of 1 over 1. A sub 2 is going to be cosine of 2 over 2. So after calculating the first four values, you can clearly see the first value is positive, about 0.5. Then we go to negative 0 0.2, negative 0 0.33, but then it bounces back up a little bit to about negative 0 0.1643. So the terms are kind of bouncing around all over the place. They're not always decreasing because as you get from the third term to the fourth term, ooh, wow, look at that, it changes again. So this is not monotonic at all. Now bounded, this is kind of an interesting one because you could use the limit process here or you could kind of simply take a look at the uh, cosine component of this because cosine, as you remember from your good old trig days, cosine is going to oscillate between negative 1 um, and 1. So the absolute value of cosine is going to be less than or equal to 1 or another way to write that is negative 1 is less than cosine um, is less than or equal to 
positive 1. So since cosine oscillates between negative 1 and positive 1, then our, our function is, our sequence is going to be bounded. All right, so that's two examples here for determining whether, you know, the given sequence is monotonic and we've discussed the boundedness of these sequences. So let's go ahead and take a look at example nine. Now with this one, it says show that the sequence with a given nth term converges. Use a graphing calculator uh, to graph the first 10 terms of the sequence and find its limit. So let's take a look at the very first thing. Show that the sequence of, it, of the given nth term converges. So we're going to go ahead and list our terms. A sub 1, so if we plug in 1, 1 over 1 is 1. So 5 plus 1, our first term is going to be 6. A sub 2, so 5 plus a half is going to be 5.5. A sub 3, so our third term, when we put that in, uh, we're going to have 5 plus 1 third, which is about 5.3. And our fourth term, A sub 4, is going to be 5 plus a fourth, or 5.25. So we can clearly see we start out our first terms at 6, and we're going down, we're going down, we're going down. So our terms are each decreasing. So therefore, the um, sequence is going to be monotonic. So another way you can write that is kind of like this general fancy math way. A sub n with the bracket braces around it is monotonic. So we've done that, all right? So we, we've shown that. Now, the next thing that we need to do is figure out whether or not this uh, sequence is bounded. Now, our first term is 6, all right? So everybody should be okay with that. So if we use the limit process here, uh, so the limit is then goes to infinity of and we'll just, uh, of 5 plus 1 over n. Now we know the 1 over n piece, that is going to go to 0 as n approaches infinity, so our limit is going to be 5 for our sequence. So here's one where our, our uh, sequence, and I'll just kind of generally call it a sub n, this one is going to be bounded both above by 6 and below by 5. So this is one where... Uh, you know, it, it is going to be bounded both above and below. And uh, since it's monotonic and bounded, that means it's going to converge. And we already found a limit as n goes to infinity. So we also know that um, a sub n does converge to 5. So we know that our sequence converges to 5. And we also know it's bounded above and below. So we've just kind of figured all of this stuff out just from listing the first four terms, and then figuring out the limit as n goes to infinity. So that's all you have to do for that. Now to graph this, so we've shown that the sequence converges. Um, and now graphing it is something by this point you guys should know how to do with that. And, you know, we could do that on our calculator, but we also, since we kind of found four of them, we know our first term, so our first term is going to be 6, so that would be right here. And our second term is 5.5, so say that would be right here. Our third term is 5.3, so now we're getting a little closer, and then a little closer. So this is where it's going to be, you know, really, really interesting as you do that. Because if we put in 10, 5 plus a tenth is 5.1, so our, we can generally see, you know, that our sequence is going to decrease in that, that kind of fashion, but it's going to be really hard to see on this kind of screen, so you really just kind of have to play with your viewing window to make sure that you get it correct. All right, so that is it for this section. Thanks for watching, you guys, and you have a great day. Peace out.